interview with Liz Agis um, at the Old Market Brighton, Saturday 26th of May 2012. I often think, well, that depends. I describe it differently depending on who's the audience. <laughs> if it's an academic audience, I describe it in one way. If it's a, uh, I'm trying to get a gig from a venue, I describe it in another way. So in a way, I try and tailor the language accordingly, but for the purposes of this, what might I say? Um, well, I think I am, well, I know I am. I sit on the edges of um, conventional contemporary dance practice. I make work that slips between the floorboards of disciplines. I call myself an undisciplined artist, meaning without particular discipline because I borrow from a cross-disciplinary practice or interdisciplinary practice depending on the nature of the work that I'm making. Um, I see myself, I suppose, as a maverick artist and um, anarchic in, in the sense that I'm not I'm not about to create anarchy on stage, particularly, but I know it sits anarchically within the conventions of, um, I suppose, dance, you could say. Although, I never classify myself at all, which is why when I introduce myself, I, I precursor everything I say with the slash to highlight the fact that there that the slash, in a way, undoes the classifications because I call myself performer slash choreographer slash filmmaker, and I make dance slash dance theatre, etc., etc. And those slashes, in a way, represent the the inherent problems in trying to make a classification for yourself. My view is actually my view is that that. Part of the part of the way I work is always trying to work out if the idea is relevant to the medium that I'm interested in exploring. So, is it going to be if if the idea is is it a live idea or is it a screen idea or is it an installation idea or should it be um, a should it be a radio piece? It's knowing it's knowing actually how the um, parameters the, change. Absolutely. So you have to, when you're constructing the um, initial initial concept, you have to be very clear about the medium in which it best operates. That's not to say that I don't go. I'm, I want to make a screen piece, but whilst I'm investigating the screen piece and the idea, I have to be sure that the idea and the screen are the right two that work together. Because the work is about. You know, there are many kind of issues that I are embedded into into my practice. Once I've kind of found the concept that is the umbrella that holds all those ideas around, I go into a research mode, which is quite lengthy, very often. Um, and so I will re I won't enter a studio. I'll never. I won't actually work. I won't go near a studio and and start working with my body or the choreography until all the research is really well underway. I, I have to do a lot of, I do a lot of paper research, film research, photographic research, um, archival material research, a lot of thinking and a lot of uh, reading um, and a lot of going and seeing because I, I like to place what I do within kind of UK and European or whatever work really. So I like to see a lot of other practices so that I know um, how I'm framing my own practice as well. So everything is, so the frame that holds my practice is the key thing for me and that is a long, that is a long pre-studio pre process. So on the whole, once I've kind of done the research and a lot of this actually um, is done sitting, gazing into space in coffee shops. I, what I like to do is, work with specificity, that's a thing that frames my practice. So I'm, I'm looking to find the nub of it, the essence of it. So if the idea is broad, I keep worrying away at it. And I like to say that I worry away at ideas until I've found the real, the truth of the matter, if you like. Um, and once the truth of the matter has been exposed to me, then I can actually stay with it. Um, and of 
course, you're, you end up with a lot of alternative diversionary things, and I have to know which are diversions and how, which are not diversions. Because I like, because I, I think you probably see in the work that it is quite. I mean, that's why people recognise it as my work. That's the branding because it's 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 like I've got an idea and I worry it to death. Really, I stick with it. I don't I don't do what often happens. Um, keep changing its direction. I kind of like to focus on it. To what you're working with, like you know, motion control is a, a really incredibly lengthy process of thinking and actually pre-production, which is was in the studio every morning. I would get up and my husband would say to me, "Where are you going?" I'd say, "I'm getting in the box today," or "I'm I'm slamming my feet in the boots today," and I'd be in that studio. And then Billy would come in when we did motion control. Billy and I worked together, and he was he kind of we did the camera body relationship because that was very complicated. Yeah. And yeah, that really fascinates me with in my work. It's mm. very much the focus on sort of the, as I said, the exchange, the interplay of technology and mm. camera and the body and sort of like whether like the break I'm doing a duration piece for my final show mm. and, um, and it's something obviously a breakdown of the body within the space that the technology keeps going. Yes. So it's quite fascinating, especially yeah. the um, the ad cut to the end. Yes. When you've got the camera zooming in. Yes, yes. Well, that was that. Those um, outtakes actually were really. Though we didn't know we were going to use the outtakes, but in true sort of postmodern deconstruction, it's you know quite an interesting thing to do and undo, if you like, the thing that interests me. This this thing about fact, what is fact and what is fiction. So you're constantly asking the audience to be present in the work, so they're asking questions about. A, how it might be done, is this, am I seeing this truthfully, is this upside down, or is she upside down, or in Beach Party Animal, are those really gorilla, in, are those in, are those are real people, or are they not real people, so you're constantly, you know, looking for ways to ask your audience to engage positively and actively with the work, so that's, you know, those outtakes were an, an example of, if, if uh, an audience on the, on the whole would be very interested to know how. It's the other side of it, it's the other side of the camera, because obviously you can Absolutely. see that there's the interaction of the camera and the way that you're performing the moves, and mm. it's a very simple, isolated moves. But then obviously at the end of it, it's sort of like, okay, you're in the space with the camera, and that's how it is, it's mm. showing it on both sides. And that, of course, then asks an audience, an audience will then reflect back on, so how do you choreograph a camera? Mm. And all of those, the process then becomes embedded into your idea when you're watching it. If you watch it again, you'll be thinking, so how do you choreograph a camera? And like what filming a camera, filming you. Yes. Sort of like how can you, and how, what do you ask a camera? What is it you can ask a camera to do? What are the words? Because that was the whole of that motion control was about what is the language for the camera? Can I ask a camera to do this? <coughs> Yes, you can, but not every camera can do it. And so it's kind of, it's really interesting to sort of play across. Functionality is a bit of Yeah, to play across, yeah, technology, cameras, bodies. They all do different things, but can you ask them to, to work together and what language do you have to do? I mean, it's really interesting with a motion control camera as well because the operators are technicians, they're computer operators. So my language to ask a computer operator and say to him, can this camera do this and then describe it in performance language and get him to work out what that means in terms of binary languages and computer languages was really interesting. They would sometimes say no or we can try it but we think the camera will fall off its tracks if we ask it to do certain things. There were lots of. Um, there were lots, lots of a learning process for you as well, isn't it? Sort of learning. The Absolutely. Learning to it but also learning, learn the camera operators are also learning about what a motion control camera can do because normally it isn't used like that. Normally it is used in like you know your Kylie Minogue video, your George Michael video. It's, moving along it's multiples, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know an exact trans. Um, transformation and uh, exact replication because that's what a motion control, control camera can do but to ask it to be more visceral to actually have a personality yeah have a character it, it, it was kind of something that those operators were very interested in to how to make translations 
so that was yeah, it's really like, it's like looking and perspective from through someone's eyes, isn't it? Obviously the lens yeah. and stuff you're sort of like tying that in and yeah. the interaction. Like yeah. the, it's really interesting. You know, I think because there's so many different components of motion control, yeah. it's just fascinating. And you can watch it over and over again and there's something new that you get from it, which I think mm. is amazing to have a piece of work that does that. And you want that. And as you said, you're presenting mm. audience then with something that they can take. Well, they want to see it again because they weren't sure if they really believed their yeah. eyes the first time mm. round. I mean, that piece was made in 2001 or two. Mm. You probably know better than me. And it's still, I get phone calls and emails all the time. And it's still, it, it probably is the most widely played film in terms of dance film, I'd say, because it actually does what I think people think dance film should do. It does what it says on the tin. Yeah. It is a dance with a camera. You know, in that way, it really is. And I, 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 I can't see an end to it. And then pushing those in a really interesting aesthetic direction is what makes your work stand out from the crowd. If that's the thing mm. that's important to do or, or, or demonstrates a kind of practice that nobody else is actually doing. And also asks the audience to sort of think about the world in which they live in that has all this technology mm. as well. I mean, working with a long lens was such an interesting thing. At certain points, um, you know, when we were filming Tommy with the ice cream, he was, it was so, we only did five takes of that. And the first time on the beach, the whole beach fell about laughing. And then they had no idea why he kept repeating it, because they couldn't see where the camera was, because it was on a drawing a way, way away. But I kept running in with a new ice cream saying, redirecting da, 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 and then running out again or throwing myself out of sight line and what's wonderful about that is that the audience in that beach are they're either not connect they don't care which yeah. is lovely they're absolutely in their own spaces mm. as well or there's a few people behind that are kind of making a commentary mm. on what he's doing and those those are you couldn't capture those moments if you didn't have that, that kind of camera and lens. You just couldn't do it. Also, it's very, I mean, that, 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 that um, camera is so interesting as well because it means you can, every day, you have to download off the cards. And it means that you're kind of self-editing, really, because every day we'd go home and just dump everything down and reject, 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 and put that, like, hold, Yes, maybe, possibly. But you're just constantly critiquing yourself, and you can do that because, because computers are so fantastic. They have this capacity to support your work as they never, as they never could have done in the past. You know, Beethoven Lo in Love was a film, the first film I made, 1994, 16 millimeter, and we edited, and it was a real, it's a steam back, you know, chop, clunk, click, make a mistake, you've lost it, you know. You know, you can go back and sort of this way, yeah, technology is incredible. It gives you the capacity to revisit and change and support your errors and, you know, really be critical about what you've done and then start all over.